Real estate generally appreciates. It grows exponentially over time and sometimes even outpacing market predictions. Welcome to the Freedom Point Real Estate Podcast, where we talk about creating more time freedom through passive real estate investing. Passive investing in real estate challenges conventional investment wisdom. We are passionate about learning and sharing resources with others who are ready to transform their investing mindset. Quick disclaimer as always, I am not a CPA, I am not an attorney or a financial advisor. This is not financial advice, not telling you or anyone else what to do. The views and opinions expressed in these podcasts are provided for education and informational purposes only and are not necessarily the views of my employer, ADP. I'm glad you're here. Now let's dig in. Hello, Freedom Point podcast listeners. My name is Drew McWilliams and I will be your host today. Today, we're going to discuss business ownership versus real estate ownership. Which one is right for you? As I've walked the dual path of both business and real estate ownership for the better part of two decades. Over the last 17 years, I've navigated the challenging and rewarding world of business ownership. Alongside my wife, we've operated a chain of children's preschools. And also, we've been buying and selling businesses in this industry and others along the way. Concurrently, my journey in the real estate sector has had me invest and manage in seven brick and mortar rental properties in four different states, and I'm invested in seven additional real estate syndications with multiple different operators. So which one is right for you and which has been the best path? Let's unpack that a little bit. You know, the inner lining of these two domains has been eye-opening for myself. Today, I'd love to share these lessons, these challenges, and triumphs of that journey with the hope that you can take away a nugget of wisdom or advice along your journey. Let's begin with talking about the power of business ownership. Let's talk about pros and cons. First, control over your destiny. There is no doubt that that has been the biggest advantage. When you own a business, you're kind of the captain of the ship. Every decision, every risk, and every strategy stems from you. This power translates to both growth both of you personally uh, and financially in business. Let me share an example. Uh, As we sit here at the end of 2023, in today's ever-present difficult labor market, when it's difficult to recruit new staff, I am a business owner and presented with the tough decision of either A, overcompensating staff to recruit them and to be able to retain top talent, even knowing that my bottom line profit from my personal pocket decrease, Or B, I have the ability to save on salaries, increase my personal income, maybe attract less than ideal staff, but knowing that I'm going to be financially rewarded personally because of that. For me, myself, the best decision with this and many other type of business ownership situations is you've got to look long term. And I know that's probably very easy listening on a podcast, but when put in a very difficult situation, a lot of business owners make the decision of what's best right now not what's best down the road. For myself, hiring the right staff first is the right decision. Although it might decrease my bottom line short-term, the long-term effects, it's going to boost customer satisfaction. It's going to create less turnover. And overall, it's going to allow me to increase my rates more effectively long-term when my morale and my customer satisfaction has been increased and my demand increases for my business. Number two pro, Definitely wealth accumulation. Unlike working a W-2 job where you have a fixed salary, there's no cap in ownership of a business. If you are successful and the business is successful, then the rewards can multiply exponentially each year. You then have that ability to delve that financials into real estate investing or maybe other avenues that are right suited for you. Creating a diversified portfolio with long-term planning in mind is obviously the best bet. Lastly, tax advantages. The financial landscape definitely favors entrepreneurs. There's no lie. From deductions to credits, there's various tax advantages that you can leverage by being a business owner, resulting in more capital for yourself, your company, creating the ability to invest more or to have expansion opportunities. So now let's talk about the cons of business ownership. Number one, increased responsibility. There is no doubt that I have had my fare of sleepless nights over the last two decades. From staffing challenges to the financial crisis of 2008, 
to the recent COVID pandemic, the responsibilities can be quite overwhelming, no lie. Business ownership is certainly not for the faint of heart when you have no other source of income and your family relies on your business as its sole means. Financial risk, number two. You know, investment can be significant, especially in the early stages when you're in the startup mode. Not all ventures succeed, which quite honestly, I was naive to whenever we started out in our 20s in business ownership. I assumed you opened the door, you flipped on the light, and boom, you were in business and profitable from day one. And that's not always the case with most businesses. It's essential to be prepared, both financially and mentally, for potential downturns. When my wife and I decided to double down on our business during 2010, and then again in 2020, when all that economic crisis were happening, our friends and our family thought we had absolutely lost our mind. But what, what they were seeing was all the news and all the headlines and all the doom and gloom. What we saw by looking outside the box was an amazing opportunity to create more value, purchase assets at a tremendous discount, and be able to scale to be able to help us long term. So let's talk about segment number two here, pros and cons of real estate investment and purchasing. Pros, passive income stream. Uh, one of my best friends loves rental properties, and he loves the term mailbox money, Drew. I love when my mailbox money comes. Passive income really is the beauty of real estate, that once you've made that initial investment and put some things in motion, it can create consistent revenue. I've firsthand seen the power of a property that appreciates equally in value by owning properties over the last 20 some years, by also watching that monthly income come in as well. Number two, appreciation over time. Unlike most assets, real estate generally appreciates and it's a tangible asset. It grows exponentially over time and sometimes even outpacing market predictions, which is what's happening currently. Number three, tax benefits. Capital gains, property-related deductions, the tax system offers various advantages to real estate investors, enhancing profitability and allowing multiple write-offs. So what are some cons of real estate ownership and investing? Number one, management challenges. There's no doubt dealing with tenants, termites, and trash is the biggest nightmare and problem. Owning properties isn't just about collecting rent. There are tenant concerns and maintenance and unexpected costs. I love when an HVAC unit went out this year, cost me over $6,000. Wasn't budgeted and wasn't planned for. I've been able to play debt collector before, counselor to a marriage couple, handyman more, more times than I have ever dreamed up over the last two decades with all of my brick and mortar properties that I own. This is the sole reason why moving forward for the last 12 months now, I will only invest in real estate syndications that produce passive rental income moving forward. No more brick and mortar investments for me, although that was a great opportunity to learn. Uh, passive income is definitely the route to go without having to deal with those management challenges. Con number two, market uncertainty. Like any investment, real estate isn't immune to market fluctuations. It's a long-term game and patience is absolutely crucial. So can you combine the two? Which avenue do you pick? Why pick one avenue? The diversification of my involvement in both business and real estate has also been a safety net for myself. When one sector faced challenges, the other one has thrived. A balanced approach leveraging strengths from both worlds has provided me with a lot of financial security. Moreover, they can fuel each other. Profits from one business can be reinvested into the other one and vice versa. The compound effect is tremendous. So here are some actionable insights to leave you with today. For those considering this dual path, here are a few strategies. Number one, start small. Don't dive head first. Start with a small investment or a side business. Learn the ropes before being fully committed. Number two, educate yourself. Continuously learning is a big key and factor for me in anything that I do. Attend workshops, read books, connect with industry experts so you can learn best what you're getting into and how to navigate those stormy waters whenever you enter them. Number three, network. Building strong personal relationships can often open doors to opportunities and partnerships 
you might not otherwise realize. Build a strong network. In conclusion, financial freedom isn't about choosing the best path, but about leveraging multiple avenues in my mind. I invite you to take the reins off your financial destiny, embrace both worlds, business and real estate, and watch as you pave your way to unparalleled success. I would love to connect with you and learn more about your story and if I can help you along your journey, no matter what it might be. Feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or my email address of drew at startingpointcapital.com. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for hanging out with us today and for listening to the Freedom Point podcast powered by Starting Point Capital. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Nothing said on this show should be considered financial advice. Before making any financial decision, please consult with a professional. This show is copyrighted by the Freedom Point podcast. Written permissions must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting. If you're interested in connecting, you can find contact information at startingpointcapital.com.